Hi, it's Jill from Joe's Country Junction and I am here today and I'm gonna show you a little bit about our latest stitch along. Um, this is going to be a video that I tell you a little bit about um, how to stitch along. And uh, I've had a lot of people ask me if I would be a little bit more thorough about hosting a stitch along, kind of teaching people how to stitch, uh, teaching people how to start a project, just a real basic beginner kind of video. And I decided I'd give it a try. I don't know how it'll go, but you know, hey, we'll give it a try. I'm game for anything. And uh, before I didn't have a very good system to film me, and now I'm hoping um, the stand that I have for my video might allow me to do that a little bit more. I'm going to try the best I can, but there's kind of some rules you're really not supposed to show your chart, so some of that I can't show you very well. I might flash it quick, but um, I'm going to try to be respectful of the designer and um, their rights to their own work, and I'm going to try to be respectful of you, who is a new person who wants to learn to stitch. And so what we're stitching for our stitch along this time around is, I don't know if this is gonna be backwards for you or not, but this is Spring Messenger by um, Scattered Seed Samplings. And so here I've had this kitted up from um, the Stitchery Nook in Osage, Iowa. I'll put a link for them down below, but it's a cute little thing. It's got a little robin and it's got the word Spring Messenger on it. And you can see the little robin's nest. It's um, kitted with DMC because that's what the pattern call is called for. And um, we're using um, Vintage Country Mocha. That's also what's called for. And so this is my fabric. And that was part of the what I got kitted up in my kit as well. And so some people are stitching it on 28 count. Some people are stitching it on 36, 32. Some people are stitching it on Ada. And you're welcome to stitch it on whatever you want. Uh, the templates in the pattern are designed so that they are um, meant to be um, it's meant to be stitched on 36 count if you're going to use that template but I'm going to tell you a few things right from the beginning I'm not using a template one of the reasons is I want to stitch on 40 count and the other reason why I'm not using that template is because um I don't know if I'm gonna finish it in an oval. I might and I might not. So in light of that, I'm not gonna stitch this very outer edge here. And even if I was stitching the, this, I don't think I would stitch that outer edge anyway because when you're finishing something and you're lining it, lining it up, to have that outer edge on there makes it more difficult to, to finish. Um, because you've got to make sure that that line is exactly in the right spot where you get a little leeway if that line's not there. So I'm not going to be stitching that outside line. You're welcome to do whatever you want to do. Um, it's your project. I'm just giving you some suggestions and answering some questions according to what I do. And so if you're really new to stitching, I'm going to just, I'm just going to pretend like you don't know anything and you can just like, um, ignore the parts you know or say oh she does that different than me you can just do it however you want but this is not a Bible um, this is not something you need to follow you you do it however you want to it's so like for me I have a hoop here today because I stitch with a hoop um, I put my DMC floss on bobbins. And so I'm just showing you what I do. If you don't do those things, it's perfectly fine. Um, there's many different ways to cross stitch and you can get results no matter how you do it. So I, first off, um, I have my, oh, I'm not gonna say first off. I, I have my glasses, um, I have a scissor, and I have needles. Um, people always ask what's my favorite, and my favorite are these Easy Guide ball tip needles from Sullivan's. Um, they're my favorite. I am stitching today with a 28 count because, or 28 size 28 needles because that's what works best with 40 count. If you're working with 36 count, um, these would still be a good needle. Um, if you're working like 32 or 38 or 18 count Ada, 
Um, you might want to use a 26 needle, and if you're stitching with something smaller, you're probably going to want to use a 24 needle. I also make myself a working copy. Not everybody does that. People ask me, why do you do that? Well, I do that because I can write on it if I want to. I can um, mark off places I've already stitched if I want to. Um, I don't care if the, if the dog gets it and <laughs> runs away with my copy. I don't care because I have the original copy in my um, pattern. And so the pattern, I'm going to just show you quick. The pattern comes with a few different things. There's the front cover, um, the chart, or what they call the legend is on the back. And so you can look and find the symbol and then find which um, color we're supposed to stitch in that spot. Um, it has a, the chart. Um, it has inside a template. And it has another template down here for a heart template. I don't know what that's for. I don't see anything on the pattern that uses a heart. I don't know. I don't know if that's just something they added or what. I'll probably have to read the directions because that's one thing I'll tell you to do is you should read the directions because it does come with some directions. But I think I kind of skimmed real quick. I think these are more finishing directions than they are actual directions on how to stitch. So I've got those pieces set aside. Um, I'm going to put this all back in the package because as you can hear, my dogs are running around and <laughs> making a mess. I don't want to drop something um, on the floor and um, then have them grab it and run away with it. So first I'm going to show you uh, how these are the bobbins that I use for using my floss and I'm going to show you how I do those. I'll put a link for them below too. And so I take the, the ends off of my um, embroidery floss. Hey, Izzy, shh. Okay, and so this is the piece I want to keep, and this is the end I want to note, because if if we unwind, it's not Izzy, it's my foster pup that's barking. His name's Mork. Um, hey, Mork. Um, the type of bobbins I use, what you do is you take and you slide that on there like that, and then you take, and then you take the end and you start your bobbin like this, and then you just wind. I'm just going to wind one of them for us today, and I'll wind the other when I'm off camera. But um, if you if you pull your embroidery floss from the end that has the number on it, then it doesn't um, knot up as easy when you're trying to wind bobbins. And I know a lot of people use floss drops. I know a lot of people use a lot of different things, but I like I like my DMC bobbinated, and so that's what I do. I'm kind of old school girl, and that's okay. I remember when I was in high school back when I first learned how to cross stitch. I'm 57 years old today. Well, it's not my birthday, but I'm 57 years old now. And it um, happens to be February 4th of uh, 2023. And so when I was in high school, I learned to cross stitch, you know, just from one of those little kits that we used to get that was in the dime store for, you know, $1.89 or something. Uh, my mom was super good about um, letting me try crafts. And so, hey, Rosie and Izzy, come here. Okay, stop. Or stop. <laughs> this is my life with dogs. <laughs> I love it, but sometimes they're a bit much. I was hoping if I could just distract them, that might be good. Um, I have this. This is my piece of linen. And um, the stitch count on this is 123 by 80. I'm going to have to stop and I'm going to have to put the dogs in a kennel. So, well, maybe I'll try one more time. Well, yeah, my little foster pup's getting feisty. His name's Mork. He's an um, Australian shepherd and he's just um, getting close to three months old. So, well, at least they went in the other room. So let's just keep trying this. Um, so being it's 123 by 80, um, I'm stitching on 40 count. So you take the number 40 and you divide it by two, that gives me 20. So I divide, I divide 123 by 20, that's about six. And I divide 80 by 20, that's about four. So mine's gonna be about six by four. And I can tell if I start this, if I start like two inches in, I'll have plenty of room. But this design being it's oval, I'm wondering about um, doing this the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way is to fold it in half and to fold it in half again and find the middle and then find the middle of your chart. 
to find the middle of your chart, there's an arrow here and there's an arrow at the side and you just go in and in and that's how you find the middle. And a lot of people like to start that way so that their design is exactly in the middle. Typically, I like to start up in the corner over here. But being this is an oval design, it doesn't have a corner really. And it's kind of hard to find a spot to start. So I actually think I'm gonna start this one in the middle. You don't have to do the same thing every time. You can look at the design and you can decide what method is good for this design. And for this design, I think a center start is a great idea. And so that's probably what I'm gonna do too. So if I go center to center, um, it's going to be about mid bird wing is where the center is going to be for that. So that's what we're going to do is we'll start, um, well, at least that's what I'm going to do. And, um, if you're on this journey with me, maybe you're going to start there too. So I have one of these bobbinated. I am going to shut off the camera. I'm going to bobbinate my other ones. And then I'm going to move my camera up top because I have an overhead camera here, uh, overhead thing that I can attach the camera to. And I am going to see if we can figure out how to let me show you how I'm starting this. So here we go. Okay, we're here at the table and I have done a few things while we were off camera. I went and put all of my bobbins onto, or all of my floss onto my bobbins. And I like to just use a shower ring curtain. Otherwise I use the binder rings and I put them, put these on here and I put them in numeric order, starting with, I put the highest number on and then go to the next highest number. I've got my reading glasses on and this is just far enough away that I'm not able to see the numbers very good. I'm a little bit worried how this is going to be to film, but we'll just give it a try because that's about all we can do, right? Is give it a try. So I have these already. They're on my um, binder ring and, or my shower curtain ring and they're ready to go for our project. And I'm gonna pull out one of my needles. And as I said, these are the ball tip needles. That's my preference for a needle. And I'm going to come over here and remember we had talked that we're going to probably do a middle start so i have this folded in half and i have this folded in half and i'm going to take and i'm going to put my needle right in here like this and then that will show me where that needle is right there is my center and i'm going to take my hoop i use a morgan hoop um, they have this little um, ridge in them here and a ridge in them here so that when they go together like that that ridge locks in there and then it holds the fabric a little better so um, i put this one on the bottom and i put this one on top one thing i want to tell you about the linen that we're using for this this is called vintage country mocha it is not a hand dyed linen it's a spray dyed linen so they have a sprayer that they spray this and they only spray it on one side so this side looks like this kind of vintagey and kind of you can see them um what looks like modeling here and then here the back is just plain you can see the difference i'll hold that up i don't know if that helps or if that hurts as far as lighting goes if you want to stitch it on this side, feel free. But if you want more of an antique older look, then you're going to want to stitch it on this side. So um, it's going to take me a little adjusting to getting to figure out this camera. But here we go. So I put this in here and I'm going to tighten this up. And I use a hoop, but I use a sewing method when I use a hoop. And so I'm hoping that you can, I'm trying to, determine quite where my hands need to be so you see the best okay so you can see how this is loose this is how I like it when I stitch is I like it loose like that I'm actually going to move this hoop down a little bit because I'd rather have this be up a little higher so I'm just gonna go like this move this like this I think and then we're gonna so this needle here is holding the center of our fabric and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go like this. Oh, no. Did you see my needle just fly away? I think I got it, I do, yay. Okay, I think we're about right here. It's close enough for me. Okay, so you see how I just kind of shook the needle in there and then I can see that that's my hole for starting. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna look at my chart quick. I'm gonna flash the chart and I can see right here that the, um, symbol that we're going to start with is an x so then we're going to look at our chart our chart here says an x is uh dmc number 844 
So this is 8.44 right here. I'm gonna grab some off. I know some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, Joe, this is so basic. It is so basic, but the reason is there's lots of people who are interested in learning how to craft stitch and uh, really don't have any idea how. So being I'm stitching on 40 count linen, I'm gonna use one strand of floss. And so I'm just gonna pull my strand of floss out like this. If you were stitching on something that is smaller than 36 count linen, you're going to want to for sure have two strands of thread. I'm just gonna wind this back on. Um, but if you're stitching on 36, some people use one, some people use two. Um, I just stitch on 40 and then I don't worry about it. One of the reasons why I stitch on 40 count is because I do not like stitching with more than one um, strand of floss. So yes, I'm a licker, I lick my needle. I'm just gonna thread my needle if I can with it this far away from me because I have to keep some distance so that you can still see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go up into, the, uh, up into that hole and that's my center. And so looking at my chart here a little bit, I'm gonna kind of flash the chart and hopefully um, you'll get the hang of um, right here where this dot is, where this open color with nothing on it is about the center of the chart. And so I am going to go over what it looks like to be about five stitches and start in that row. Whoop, oh, okay, my needle. This is a typical start for me, it's kind of awkward. Okay, so I'm gonna come up right here. And what I do when I start is I pull, now I got a hair here. Usually it's dog hair I'm stitching into my projects, not my own hair. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside, not throw it on the floor, look at me be a good girl. Okay, so I have about this much of a tail and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna bend it over. And then I'm gonna come on um, the front side. And when you stitch on linen, you go one thread, two threads, and then you go over one thread, two threads. And that's the hole you go down. Okay, now I'm gonna look on the back because I wanna catch my thread in this stitch. So I'm gonna move my thread close, as close as I can to where I went. And then I'm gonna come over here and this first stitch, I'm gonna come up in the other corner and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna look to the back to make sure I locked that thread in place. So that's how I that's how I start. Other people start differently. They do a pin stitch. I don't do that. Um, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do, how you start. But this is how I start, and I'm trying to show you exactly what I'm doing so that um, you can be a beginner stitcher as well. So from the chart, when I'm looking at it, I have to make three X's. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make three. So there's my first X. Then I'm going to go down, I'm using the sewing method. So you see where this X is right here? I'm gonna go down there and then you can go one, two. I hope, are you seeing that? Yep, okay, one, two, threads over, and then I'm gonna pull and come up. And then I'm gonna go down in that hole and I'm gonna go one, two. Can you see the two threads on my needle there? And I'm gonna pull that up. And then I'm gonna go like this, one, two, and this time I'm gonna go down because, and I'm just gonna pull it and I'm gonna keep it down. So I've got three stitches there. I keep wondering if you're seeing that and I'm holding in a good spot for you. Okay, so I've got three stitches there. Then according to my pattern, I don't stitch anything in the next stitch. So I've got to count over one, two, and then I have to put a stitch in this next spot. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count one, two back, one, two up, and I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go down because I just have one stitch I'm gonna stitch right there. And if we look at the back, you can see what I'm doing. Um, I did the three stitches here, I skipped one and then do, did two stitches there. I'm gonna come back with my scissors and I'm just gonna clip off this tail. I'm gonna clip it about off about that long and hopefully when I come back the next time, I'll gather that up in another stitch in the backing and so that'll secure that tail a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna flip back over and I'm supposed to miss one. So I, I kind of drag my needle along one, two, 
and then I'm gonna go one, two more, because I gotta get ready to do that next stitch. So I'm gonna go one, two back, one, two up, one, two over, and then I'm gonna make my stitch. Okay, I'm gonna refer back to my pattern now. So if you're looking at this here, I did three stitches, skipped one, did a stitch, skipped one, and then now I've gotta do more stitches here. And according to this, I've gotta do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. So I'm gonna come up here so you can see, I hope, and I'm gonna stitch seven stitches. And as I said, I'm doing the sewing method. You don't have to do the sewing method. Um, you can do the poke method, and I'll show you what that is in a second. So you can see the sewing method's pretty smooth because it's almost just like hand sewing. Um, so if you do the poke method, this is the poke method. I come up, I bring my hand around, pull. I go down, I bring my hand down, and I pull. And I go up like this. I go down like that. You can see how that's going to take a lot longer than if you're doing the sewing method like I was doing before. So this is the sewing method. Okay, does anybody remember how many stitches I had to do in a row before I was done with that row? I'm going to count again because I don't know if it's six or seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. So we did the seven. And actually my project goes like this, just so that you're oriented. Um, and I turn my hoop as I stitch because I like stitching from right to left is what I is usually how I stitch is my preferred way. So then um, it works really good if you do the sewing method that way. And so I'll turn it this way so then I can stitch right to left and then I'll turn it back this way so I can stitch right to left again. So from what my pattern says, I need to go in one from where that was before. So I need to go in one. So I counted up and I went two up, uh, two over, and that's where I ended up at. So then now I can stitch across. There aren't any breaks in, you know, here we had those breaks for that. There are no breaks in this row. And so we're gonna stitch from here all the way over and meet that spot right there. So I'm just gonna show you how I do the sewing stitch. Um, if you notice, you can see it push up. This is why I leave the hoop the tension on the hoop really loose is I use my finger in the back there and I push up so I can grab that and then I let, kind of release it when I'm as I'm getting the stitch I use my finger in the back of the hoop my fingers back here and it's pushing up whoops we don't need that in there my fingers in the back here and it is pushing up to give a little more tension so I can catch where I want my needle to go so here I am back on this side and I need to keep going like this and you need to watch and be careful. You maybe notice that I just pulled my needle out a little further. My thread was starting getting close to doubling up and remember I just want to do one single strand of floss. I don't want to do two. Um, this is kind of hard because I have to kind of tilt it towards me so I can see. I normally stitch faster than this because I'm not trying to hold this up high and awkwardly. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. I can see why people um, haven't done many of these videos before because they're kind of hard to do. But I'm trying to make a go of it because I know so many of you are interested in learning how to cross stitch. Um, so many people have questions and it's hard to answer them uh, by not doing a video. So. I would just love to have more people cross stitching with me because um, it's just more fun when more people are doing the same thing you're doing. I know lots of you have old cross stitch from uh, back in the day when you were cross stitching. I know I did a big stint of cross stitching in the 
late 80s and early 90s and then I kind of um, transformed over transformed over to quilting and then in the last couple years I've um, picked cross stitch up again okay so here we are we're all the way over to the edge and we can stop right there we can look at our stitches and see what we think I'm pretty pleased with them everybody all the stitches are laying pretty well um, I'm gonna consult my pattern and my pattern says that I need to go in one here so I'm gonna make the go that first one. Okay, oh, I'm not over far enough because it wasn't lining up. It gets easier and easier as you stitch. Those first stitches that you put in are the hardest because you can see now here, we don't have to count over very far because we can easily see where this hole is to um, put the needle in. So you can just see the needle goes there. You don't have to like count one, two, but you do have to pay attention and make sure your first stitches were, were very good. Now remember, a lot of times when I do that first stitch, I do do the poke method, but I'm gonna come around here. And remember I said I like to stitch from right to left. I'm gonna turn my piece around and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go back to stitching my right to left. And so here I go again, just stitching all the way across. Uh, where's my hole? There it is. I thought about trying to do this in my stitchy chair or in my stitchy spot, but that just was not going to work. I could tell if I had any prayer of this working at all, I needed to do this at my kitchen table. So some things I want to tell you, um, some people use different kinds of clips and they clip this to their hoop if they're a hoop stitcher. Some people have what they call Q-snaps. They're like a PVC pipe with a clip that holds your stuff in place. Um, one thing about if you use those, they're a little bulkier, and so I don't like them as well. But some people like them because then the hoop doesn't go over the spots that they've previously stitched. You can see if I'm stitching a big design at some point, this hoop is gonna have to go over the top of some of the stitches that I've already made. And some people just don't like that. So that's one of the reasons why they use a Q-snap. Some people stitch with a, like a lap stand or a floor stand, and then they have a scroll frame. I'm just a hoop girl. I just really like a hoop. It's the more portable of the options. And then there's some people who stitch in hand. So people who stitch in hand, they just crumple up their fabric and they hold it and they just stitch like you would um, if you're gonna do hand sewing, like even on a binding of a quilt or something like that. They just hold all that in their hand and then stitch. I don't like that method because I like to see everything and I think it's uh, more loosey-goosey to try to find your holes when it's taut like this. Well, kind of taut. You know, you can see my fingers back there that I'm making it more taut. Um, then I can, oh, I, I, I can see the holes better so I know where the needle's going to go. And I like that much better. But you can see that stitching gets faster after you get those anchor um, stitches in, the first starting stitches. Okay, so I'm going to stop for a second i'm consulting back to my chart when i look at my chart here we're on the okay we've already stitched one row two rows or we're stitching on the second row above the spot that has the two holes in it so in the second row i'm supposed to go in one so i have to stop right here and this is my last stitch of this row and so i'm going to complete that stitch and then I'm gonna turn again, because remember I like to stitch this method, and then I'm gonna count again to see where I have to start. Okay, I go in again. So I'm gonna come up here. It gets quicker to orient too, because I can see that their hole's already there, so I know I need to be there. I can see the hole is there, so I can go there. So it's much quicker to get going and stitching again. So I'm just stitching across. And I am going to, when I get across here to the other side, I'm gonna pretend I'm to the end of my thread and I'm gonna show you how I um, stop with, a, with one color of thread or with, uh, when I get to the end of a um, string, well, a piece of floss, what I do to end. 
just so you get the hang of that too. I'm always, um, oh, my dishwasher's been running. I wonder if that was noisy or awkward for you to hear that. I didn't even realize or think about that. Okay, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna look at my chart to see where I'm supposed to where I'm supposed to stop next. Okay, it looks like I'm supposed to stop at the same spot I stopped before. So I need to stop at the next stitch. And that's where we're gonna pretend like I'm done with this color, even though I'm not. So I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna flip this over. And this is what my back looks like. It seems like there's one um, more loose line and then one more solid line. That's typical. So what I do is I just, I just go like this and I go like this. And then I just clip the thread off. That's how I do. Some people close with a pin stitch. Um, I'm sure there's other methods. Whatever you do, try to avoid with all possibility. Try to avoid a knot. Because if you have a knot, once you finish this, you, you can, might be able to see the knot if it's lumpy. So that's how far we are so far. And let's say that we need to start stitching again. Um, then I'm looking at my chart. I need to go, I need to start in two. And let's say we re-threaded and we have a new floss and we want to start again. So I come back here. Okay, I want to start on this end. So I, this is what I do now. I run it through and then I run it through again. Um, I'm not saying that this is like the right method. It's just a method. Um, there's other ways that I'm sure are better, but this is just how I do it. People have wanted to see how I do it, and so I'm showing you how I do it. Okay, so my my finger was on the back there, and it felt when the thread was ready to be to give, and I kind of pushed a little pressure so that that thread didn't come loose. So I'm going to start with my first stitch. Okay, and I'm gonna just revert and check back to my chart. Yep, I was supposed to go in two, and then I'm supposed to go two pass this way. So I'm gonna go and stitch over. And we're start what we're starting to stitch now. This was part of the wing. Now we're going up and stitching um, the head of the bird, but it's all the same color because he's a pretty little robin. It's kind of hard with a camera because um, I don't know exactly where the lens is that's filming it in accordance to where my hands are. So hopefully you're seeing this pretty good. Oh, I can hear my dogs outside wrestling now. Okay, I've got two more stitches to do. Okay, now I'm on my last stitch. And so I'm just gonna, like if I'm normally stitching and I'm gonna stop, I, I just do something like this. Some people have a needle minder and it's like a magnet that they put up here and then they put their needle on there because they don't wanna put holes in their linen right here. This doesn't bother me. They'll clean up later and it's not a big deal to me. And I actually don't like needle minders because it's just more weight for me to hold with my wrist. Um, another reason why I don't stitch in hand is because I get hand cramps in this hand really bad if I um, stitch in hand. So the hoop method is a good method for me. So what I would normally do here, I'm going to show you the chart again quick. Um, we're right about here in the chart, stitching along. And I would go up and I would finish this head. And then I'd probably tie off and then come down here and um, go back and fill in the rest of the body of the bird. And then I would probably do the breast of the bird and the legs of the bird and then the beak. And there's some... Um, uh, a leaf and a cherry or something in the brand in the beak of the bird and then I'd probably come over this way I don't know I'm kind of I'm kind of all over it's a little bit harder um it's easy stitching when you'll be just be stitching this part and it'll be easy stitching to do this part but once you got to go over here and count over to start that s that's when it's a little harder but just be patient with yourself and it'll take a little time but before long you'll get to do it and so that's how I do the sewing method. And that's how I am starting my chart out with um, 
the stitch along for scattered scattered seed samplers and this was the spring messenger pin keep and uh, I hope that you will join me in stitching this or feel a little bit more confident to give it a try. I'll put some links below to show you um, how to get to the Stitchery Nook who is putting together kits for the Stitch, for the stitch Along. I'm uh, so happy that you are here with me and um, hung out with me while I worked on starting this and uh, I hope it gives you a little confidence to stitch along. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.